this is our third weekend of our course uh, of history of philosophy in America. Uh, as you remember, our first meeting was uh, quite uh, general, uh, kind of introduction to entire course. And the second, uh, we try to answer uh, the question, what is uh, philosophy? Uh, and I am very glad that uh, you took part so actively via uh, chat, uh, asking many questions. I'm sorry, those of you who were uh, perhaps frustrated uh, asking questions and uh, not finding uh, answers. Uh, but uh, I hope uh, that you are not uh, discouraged and uh, your questions you will bring uh, to our next meetings because philosophy is not uh, a clearly cut uh, subject. Uh, we can see different ramifications in different directions. So perhaps uh, uh, also the present topic, uh, namely methods of uh, philosophizing will also inspire you to ask me questions and I hope I will be able to to answer them. Uh, we had uh, problems with the quality of uh, my uh, short films, particularly the second and third. Uh, I hope that today uh, the quality will be okay. So let us start with the first part. Uh, namely, I will briefly discuss uh, the problem of uh, methods uh, of philosophizing, uh, taking it as an example, uh, letters, the simple letters. Uh, we already had the occasion to discuss the seventh letter of Plato to his students, and some of you even asked me a question connected with this letter. Uh, and I will repeat only that uh, this is a, a very common way to um, uh, give more details about uh, the philosophy known to the audience from books. And uh, Plato is uh, one of many uh, masters of schools who wrote to his uh, student's uh, letter explaining what uh, does it mean to follow him. And uh, the problematic question was, uh, what is uh, more important or more relevant, the written text, which we know from uh, his pen, from his dialogues, or uh, the oral transmission of his teaching. And uh, the paradox was that uh, Plato was saying that actually the oral uh, transmission is more important because it's vivid, because you can modify it, because you are open for uh, questions, uh, questioning even, and so on and so on. And the same explanation of controversial points you will find in entire history of uh, uh, our Western philosophy and uh, particularly in modern time after introduction of uh, a print, uh, these letters are more and more uh, accessible, easy to write and uh, just take one example of uh, uh, Lesha Kowakowski, who is a well-known philosopher. He wrote something like 13,000 letters, which uh, some of them were already published, some are uh, available in the archive in National Library. So everyone interested in, in some um, not clear uh, elements of his philosophy could uh, go to his archives and read uh, uh, letters explaining certain elements of his philosophy. Uh, so letters written by philosophers to uh, their colleagues or to friends or to students. This is 
the way to philosophizing. Uh, another type of uh, letters uh, we can find uh, in the New Testament. Probably a few of you thought that the New Testament uh, could be seen as the philosophical uh, book, but in fact uh, it could be uh, seen in this way, particularly, and we find 14 uh, letters by um, Paul, Paul of Tarsus, called also Paul uh, the Apostle, and uh, we see a completely different type uh, of letters because uh, Paul, of course, was well educated. Uh, he was uh, a Jew who studied with rabbis, uh, who was uh, also a very fervent uh, follower of um, his religion. But uh, in certain moment of his life, he experienced uh, a very strange uh, event, which we call conversion. And uh, after he was silenced for many years, uh, but uh, his friend uh, Barnaba uh, saw in him a very uh, good uh, material, so to say, for an apostle and asked him to, to come back and to go with him in different um, travels. And uh, what we have uh, as an example of philosophical letter is that Paul not only transmitted uh, through oral uh, uh, lectures or teachings to concrete groups in different places, in we know Corinth, Ephesus, Thessaloniki, Rome, so in all these place, places where he met uh, people, after he wrote a letter to them, explaining exactly what it means to be a Christian. So uh, we, we can find the basis of um, Christian philosophy. So he was like taking from Greek philosophy, from Judaism, and made a mixture of this and explain exactly what it means to be a believer, what it means to listen to our philosophical schools. And if you are interested to know what kind, what type of philosophy Paul is proposing, you go and you read these letters. For example, one letter is very important and significant, namely the letter to Romans. Uh, this letter was uh, commented by different uh, theologians, a philosopher also, uh, like for example Mar Martin Luther, uh, one of you in, in our touch, uh, uh, in our chat mentioned uh, Luther, so Luther wrote a comment to this letter. Uh, in 20th century, Karl Barth, very influential uh, thinker, also wrote about. So, uh, we have a letter, we have a um, concrete community to which the, ret the letter was written, and after you have a very long story of how this letter was received, was commented, and what people understood through this, etc. So we have a real philosophical impact of Paul letters to culture of the time. The third example is perhaps surprising for some of you, and this is the reason why I sent um, to the platform uh, uh, on, uh, where you will, will find the uh, proposal for reading, a, a book uh, dealing with this topic. This is namely a love letters. Uh, love letters uh, in a very unusual situation, namely in Abelard, a very well-known and very acute, uh, extremely influential philosopher of Middle Age, who wrote uh, different treaties. It will be an, another example of uh, methods of philosophizing. But what is interesting and perhaps even more interesting that uh, his treaties, they are letters preserved, discovered, letters to his student Heloise. And uh, Heloise was uh, his student. Uh, they fall in love and they have a fur. 
and uh, these letters are showing us a different phase of middle age. Usually, me, me, middle age has a bad uh, reputation. This is dark times, you know, uh, detached from the reality. So if you go and read this book dedicated exactly to letters between Abelard and Heloise, you will discover another uh, dimension of, of this period of time. And you will see the one philosopher who is full of passion, who explained to, to his um, lover what is essential in, 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 in life, why she is so important to him, and she writing to, to her professor, uh, explain the reason why this love is so important for her, etc., etc. All uh, finished in, in a not very good way, but uh, I will not deal uh, uh, this topic more extensively. Just uh, keep in mind that sometimes writing uh, love letters is the way to uh, to philosophize, to, to, to propose a, a, a new understanding of uh, life, or a new insight which you gain uh, through, uh, uh, through love, through affection, through dedication to other person, etc. And my last example is a very modern one. Uh, from Italy, but uh, this exchange of letters is translated into many languages, also into Polish. Uh, but I send you on the platform also uh, uh, English version, because I supposed few of you heard about. But uh, I consider this exchange of letter between a very well-known uh, writer, philosopher, a semiologist, a specialist uh, particularly of middle age philosophy, uh, but also a declared artist. And uh, because of uh, one of the uh, newspaper uh, was interested uh, of exchange of ideas between uh, a philosopher who, who was, because he passed away already, who was a former Catholic, so they asked him to write a letter to a Catholic bishop, in this case, Cardinal Carlo Maria Martini in Mil from Milan. And what is in interesting that Eco, uh, Umberto Eco is not writing to a cardinal, but uh, to a person. So he said, uh, listen, Martini, you are very influential uh, uh, hierarch, uh, bishop. I would like to have with you an exchange of ideas uh, uh, without uh, taking into account uh, uh, our respective roles. You as a Martini and me as Echo. I am teacher, I am writer, and I am interested what do you think about uh, very important issues of our life? Could you explain me what do, do, what do you think about what is the most important thing? What is uh, a, a real uh, danger of our life? What do you think about apocalyptic uh, uh, or eschatological dimension of our life, etc.? And what is interesting, and this is why I, I uh, uh, pay attention to this exchange of letters that Martini was not offended, uh, being addressed not by his function as a cardinal, but just a, a, as a person, as a Martini. He answered in, in the same way, caro uh, Umberto Eco. I can dear Umberto Eco. I said caro because the original was in Italian. So in any way, so we have here an exchange of letters between two so-called public intellectuals who, uh, of course, invited by a newspaper, by people of media interested what these two guys think about different things. And in this way, we have 
uh, now uh, available a booklet in form of booklet of this two gentlemen. So this is also a way of philosophizing. So 15 minutes is over. I will stop here and I hope that you will have uh, two questions connected with writing letters. Is there really a way to philosophizing or I'm just uh, kidding and not taking philosophy uh, seriously as it should be uh, taken?